Hi everyone and welcome. I'm Diane and my passion is painting and creating nature-inspired watercolours in my studio, which are easy for you to do too. I share all my paintings with you on YouTube and on our website, dianeanton.com, you can find free downloadable sketches for all the videos to help you make the most of your painting journey. And if you'd like a little bit more, we also have channel memberships with loads of perks for you to enjoy. So welcome on board, click subscribe and turn on notifications and let's learn to paint watercolour. Hi everyone, Diane here. Welcome to my studio. Hope everyone's well. Today I'm going to share with you my first exploration of this amazing stuff called brush which I haven't yet used, so um, we're going to explore this together. Um, I'm fortunate to have this as a gift which came from, from my friend, my dear friend Denise in California, who has been an absolute angel and sent me this the other day because I couldn't get it here in France, which is wonderful. And um, so I'm exploring this together with, with her. Hopefully she'll be watching this and with you too. So when you uh, receive your parcel of brush should you buy some and you can get it easily in America, unlike in France, um, you will get this box. Oops. This box of 12 colours, which is the basic starter pack, and it comes with a little leaflet, which tells you the basics, the very, very, very basics about how to use it, which is great. Um, for those of you who like to have a book on everything that you explore, like me, um, I'll put a link in the description below to this book, which is called The Art of Brusho by someone called Carrie McKenzie, who's from England. And she's got a lot of good ideas in here. Um, lots of, um, what's the word, examples of how to make this, this stuff work. And uh, before we actually start, I just want to show you this page here. We were talking the other day, weren't we, about the difference between abstract and um, not abstract or loose. And I think this is brilliant because she's got here two pictures side by side here, which she's done, including all the same colours, which is pretty much everything you get in this box, um, all 12 of them, it looks like. This is abstract, this isn't. This is loose, very loose, but it's clearly trees and a path and sun, light coming through the trees. This isn't. This is just abstract. So anyone who has any uh, what's the word, questions in their minds as to whether or not something can be described as abstract. You just need to look at this, this picture here too. This is abstract. Why? Because you can't see what it is. As we uh, remember, don't we, from uh, Ralph, Rolf Harris. Uh, no, yes, yes, Rolf Harris. Can you see what it is yet? No, you'll never see what it is because it's abstract. Here's another couple of examples um, of loose, paintings made out of an abstract design. She did this using um, soap bubbles with the, um, with the brush -oh, and then that inspired her to turn that abstract image into a, um, a representative image, an actual painting of a seabed. So there we are. That's today's little bit of input on the difference between abstract and loose or figurative. So let's see, and we might have a go at doing something like that uh, tree thing today if I don't get completely overwhelmed by this. So the first thing you need to do when you get your box of these is to open the box and label them. And this is because of the way you use these. They come in these little pots and it says in the book and on the leaflet and everywhere it says, do not take the lid off. That's going to be tricky, but you don't. You do not take the lid off. You write on the top, you get yourself your Sharpie and you write on it what it is. And then, I think most homes have probably got some of these, either, whoops, either these or um, ordinary drawing pins, something like that. And then what you do in order to access the crystals which are inside, you just press that in the top there. And then you can leave that like that safely stored and it won't leak uh, as long as you keep your push pin in, which then becomes moderately difficult to get out. 
This may or may not be a big enough hole. We'll soon find out. If it's not quite big enough, I guess what we would have to do is just wobble the pin around, or maybe we might have to go in there twice, something like that. You could probably make several holes there actually, so that the crystals would come out, but we'll need to try it out and see how many crystals come out of those holes. And if not enough come out, then we'll have to think again. But I have been told that this is the way to do it. I've used to, before I started doing these channels, these, these channels, I've only got one channel, goodness me, uh, these videos, I used to watch other artists on YouTube and one of them was Car uh, Karen, Karen Rice, who has done a lot of brushy painting, brusho paintings, as well as bocky paintings. And I have this, uh, so I, I learned about this from her and I thought, oh, we should try that. So we're gonna try that. So um, I'm going to turn you off for a second while I put, oh, I'm gonna just write the name of this one on here, which is Emerald Green. So we'll try to write an old green on there. And then I will, uh, well, maybe I don't need to turn you off. Perhaps I'll just puncture the rest of them. But um, yeah, I think I, I won't waste your time. I'm going to put pins in the rest of them and then I'll come back when that's all done. Okay, so now I have made a hole in the top of each of these. In fact, I've made three holes and I've discovered already that some of the pigments, the crystals are larger and, and sometimes they're smaller. So sometimes they come out more easily than others. So there's going to be a certain amount of random behavior here. Um, but I want to just do a swatch of the 12 different colors so that I can tell in future sort of roughly what color they all are. So instead of swatching out with a brush, we're gonna swatch out with a, a little spray bottle and I'm going to put uh, three rows of four. Okay, one, two, So we've got 12 spaces now. And so I'm going to go through them, starting, let's say, with lemon yellow. And we will get a, there's obviously a mixture of colors in there because orange is coming out as well as yellow, but you can see that's lemon yellow. And then we've got uh, bright yellow. That one, I think I'm going to make a bigger hole because that obviously doesn't come out as easily as the lemon. So I'm going to just enlarge that hole a bit, or those holes. You can still use the stopper as a stopper. Okay, so that's that one. And then the next color would be orange. That one comes out a bit more easily. You can see all different colors in the mix there. And then um, I'm going to go next for leaf green. And you can see that's a blend. There's green in there, there's also yellow and orange. And if you stir it up a bit, it becomes more green. The same as this one will become more orange if you stir it up. I don't want to do that too much. So that's leaf green. Then we've got turquoise. Oh, we've got one that really doesn't want to come out. Let's put a bit more water on that. There we are, that's a nice turquoisey color. And I think you can, oh, you can see it's very easy to make a mess. I'll just stab that up. I don't want that to really. And I think you can see that the crystals fly everywhere because we've already got yellow to a certain extent in these ones here. So 
try to clean those up a little bit. And I've learned something already, which is that you can't really prepare your wet spaces in advance because they just pick up the colour. So anyway, we'll just have to live with that. So that's turquoise. Um, then we've got ultramarine. Which really looks quite purpley, doesn't it? And then we've got... Um, so that's ultramarine and then the other purple, the other blue um, is purple. So I'm just going to mix that together a little bit. So to get a proper ultramarine, you have to sort of blend them together. So you get blue. Hmm. Interesting. Uh, so ultramarine, purple, emerald green we've done. After purple, we will have, uh, hang on, I've missed one out. We've got lemon, yellow, orange, leaf green, tur uh, turquoise, ultramarine, purple. Oh, I missed that emerald green. Okay, we'll put emerald green there. At least we'll try. There we are. So again, that's a mixture of different colours. Mix them together and then they will create something resembling emerald green. Then we are going to go with scarlet down here. And then the next one is as red somewhere. Where's red gone? Ah, oh, there, right, red. It's also a mixture of colors. So that one is that color red. And this one, is not that dissimilar. Uh, you have to go to the dark a bit there. Yeah. This is a, a game which is not going to be lending itself to precision, I think we could fairly say. This is already making me think this is the best way to paint an abstract painting that I can think of. This one's brown. Fair enough. And this one is going to be black. And I know that's going to be a surprise. Because when you put that one out, you get every colour under the rainbow. But then when you blend it, you get black. So there we are. That is an exercise in colour theory. It's nice and bright, isn't it? Okay. So I'm exhausted from having shaken these things so hard. I'm going to find a better way of doing that, I think. Because I don't think that that's... A, not going to do my shoulder any good shaking that like that. So yeah, well, anyway, so that's interesting. Okay, so we're going to do a painting. So I'm going to take this away, put that over there to dry before I throw it away. And I've got a piece of paper here, um, which is a nice big stretched piece of paper. I don't know what it is. I think it's, let me see. written on it, it's Bockingford. So that's ideal because that's not an expensive paper, but it's a good quality 140 pound watercolor paper and it's, um, it's stretched. So I'm gonna have a go at doing a landscape with trees. And first of all, what I'm going to do is I'm going to wet the paper along the top here, where the tops of the trees would go and I'm going to wet it there and there. And I'm going to imagine that in the space in between, there's a kind of path going through. Then I'm going to sprinkle colors up the top, which I hope are going to resemble foliage on a sunny day, and then colors at the bottom. And then I'm going to try to join them together with like tree trunk type of things. And it might very well not work. So we'll see. And this is an example that I'm trying to follow from the book. So let's start with 
some blue up here. And then I'm going to put some purple underneath that. I'm following the instructions in the book. Purple. And then we'll go to green. Emerald green, maybe? I wonder whether it would work if I tapped it. Turn it upside down and... No, I think the best thing we can do is probably make the holes bigger. I'll tell you what, maybe... Oh, no, I'm not going to risk it. I'm not going to risk doing it with a knife in case everything goes bonkers. Just make more holes. Spread it out a bit more like a salt, uh, pepper cellar rather than a salt cellar. It's got to come out, hasn't it? And then we'll put some yellow. Some yellow for the sunshine and then we go back to the green. Um, leaf green, let's try leaf green. Mm. That looks like it could do with a bit more water there. Wow. Well, Put a little bit of black up there. And do you say black? I don't think I call that black. That looks more like brown. Um, purple. Good Lord, look at that. And look at that swirling and doing all sorts of interesting things. Hmm. I think it's probably a good idea to have a uh, piece of tissue handy to uh, mop up what could be considered to be mistakes. <laughs> Let's put some red. And, well, we haven't used much in the way of ultramarine yet, if I can find it. Where's it gone? My goodness. Well. Okay, so I'm going to, uh, what I'm going to do now, I think, I'm going to make this area at the bottom a bit more consistently wet. So you can see my plan is to have, wow, this is very bright, isn't it? plan anyway is to have a path going down the middle and then colours on both sides. <clears throat> so let's go with the darker colours, let's go with, well first of all perhaps a bit of green at the back, which looks like yellow. 
This is obviously something that you need to practice, <laughs> she said. That's not coming out. I don't like that one. Purple. Purple, purple, purple. Where's purple gone? There it is. You have almost zero, zero control over what you're doing. Like, practically zero. Okay. So let's see what happens if we start to drag down some tree branches. You could call it a fantasy forest. Well, it's interesting. The side has dried a little bit more. Yes, I know I've gone a bit quiet. <clears throat> Thank you. 
if I wanted to control the colours more, which is a possibility, I might want to put a bit of paint from the container onto a palette and then I can just brush it in. However, wherever there are crystals, you're going to get pick up. And I don't know whether any of these colours will lift because I suspect that they might be fairly permanent. But where we've got too much, we might not try and lift some of that. I'm just strengthening the colour. Of the trees, you can get a really dark brown. <clears throat> I think that might be what needs to be done. So I'm just mixing some black with some dark brown. And then we probably need some some dark over here as well. And then perhaps some purple or something like that for the shadows underneath the trees. I 
Um, perhaps if I use the rigger. I don't know. Um, I think we need to let that dry. So that's the final painting, now it's dry. I've added a few distant uh, trees in there just at the last minute to give it a little bit more perspective. Um, brush, a great opportunity for being very adventurous in your painting, trying something completely new, liberating yourself and maybe veering off towards the abstract. This is obviously not abstract, but it is on the tendency towards being that way inclined. Um, so anyway, if this is your first time visiting the channel and you're not yet subscribed, please give us a like and subscribe, turn on notifications, click the bell so that you get to hear when something new has gone up. And don't forget, um, we have a YouTube membership scheme going, so you can join for $2.99 a week, um, sorry, $2.99 a month. Um, you get various different perks, or you can go to a $4.99 or $8.99 level if you want for more freebies and so on and so forth. So that's something you can definitely do if you want. Um, also, we have a website where all of our videos have got free sketches to download. You don't have to pay for them at all. Just pop on over there, download whatever you want, follow the instructions and it will be very simple. Plus, we have a few things for sale here in the YouTube shop. We've got some mugs with designs of mine on them and um, yeah, just have a, an explore. So thank you very much indeed for being here with me today. I hope you enjoyed this exploration. Uh, I'm not sure I did, but anyway, we'll be exploring this again at some point in the future. So I'll let you go now. Have a lovely afternoon, evening or morning, wherever you are. And uh, I'll see you again soon. Bye, everybody. Bye bye.